forty. Nine. <laughs> Very good morning to you. Let's bring you up to date with all of the front pages of the newspapers this morning. And the Telegraph Lee with the BBC facing a £1.7 billion pension bill due to gold-plated pensions handed to staff. The Express report on Rishi Sunak wanting to see planned protests on Armistice Day banned. And The Guardian, meanwhile, leads with Israel ruling out ceasefire until hostages are freed. The Daily Mail continues to lead on Nadine Doris's serialised book. And the Daily Star leads with the anxieties of hair loss, once again nailing the biggest story of our time. Mm, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Joining us to go through some of the day's headlines anyway, broadcaster Andrew Eborn and philosopher Piers Ben, and it's lovely to see you both Good this morning. You. Good morning, chaps. Now, we just trailed the story here. Um, Suella Braverman, Andrew, this and uh, one of your stories, is seeking to restrict the use of tents by homeless people in urban areas. How about don't have homeless people in in urban areas and stop spending £8 million a day on asylum seeker hotels and spend it on homeless. You're, you're absolutely ideas. right. What so, about yours? So what, what's happened? She's proposing a new civil offence to deter charities from giving tents to the homeless. Um, so what's going to happen? We've got the King's speech on Tuesday. And they're basically, this is to do with the 1824 Vagrancy Act, which has criminalised rough sleeping and begging. They vowed they were going to get rid of that. The question, however, in 2022, there were more than 270,000 people in England mm. who are recorded as homeless. The question is, what's going to happen? If you, if you can't sleep in the tents and so on and so forth, uh, and I live in, in the heart of London, I see walking around early in the morning, there are lots of these tents in shop doorways and so on and so mm. forth. That is the real issue. It's fine saying these wonderful things, we're going to curb rough sleepers. The way to curb rough sleepers is, is to address the real issue about how do we get them off the streets or how do we stop people coming over here in, in the first place. So there are a couple of issues there. Isn't her argument, or at least part of her argument, that sometimes these tents are misused? Yes. Mm. Um, I mean, and not to say it's homeless people who are doing it, um, but apparently there have been instances of people being dragged inside these tents and abused or right. hurt um, and, and dr a bit of, you know, drug taking or nefarious acts are mm. going on inside these tents where obviously you can't see what's going on. Uh and that's her main... And, and I think you're absolutely right, Anne. I think so we need to address that. I always say, look, let's look at the real issue. The, mm. Grabbing the headlines and saying, well, OK, we're going to get rid of this, and making it a criminal offence, an offence for charities to, to give people tents, I think is really tricky, isn't it? Or, those, uh, so, or civil offence, rather, it's not criminal. Piers, I want to bring yeah. you in here. Yeah. Um, it seems... I don't know, it just seems quite callous and sort of black-hearted, I think, yeah. uh, just to be criminalising homeless people you know, who oftentimes they're yeah. not doing this through choice, right? They're not choosing to camp out. Yeah. They'd rather be in a tent than be... Uh, well, uh, indeed, I mean, uh, as was said, I mean, homelessness is a very complex problem. Uh, near where I live, there are, there, are, there are homeless shelters, there's a Salvation Army, there's also uh, another one, and yet people are still on the streets and they have complex problems. Banning the use of tents. It reminds me a bit of, of Boris Johnson eventually trying to shut down Tent City in, in London in 2011. Remember, the, 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 because it was, it, there was an aesthetic dimension to it and there was worries about drug dealers and who knows what's going on, but it looks to me a bit of an excuse. I mean, you, it, it is callous. I don't, I don't know a solution to homelessness. I mean, there are clearly complex problems. People are homeless for a variety of different reasons. Um, and, and as you said, in the, uh, uh, there are some homeless people who don't want to go into shelters, uh, aren't there? They don't. They actually prefer to be on their own on the streets, but they still need some sort of cover. Well, yes. I, I, I don't know if that's true. I didn't say that. What I mean, there are shelters, but there are people still so, uh, begging outside as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they go outside. Well, maybe find a different uh, place to put the tents. I yeah. mean, sometimes yeah. in, the, in the parks and things like that. So mm -hmm. rather than in doorways, I mean, it is, if you walk around London, and I don't know, we do, we're up early uh, at five o'clock, six o'clock yeah. in the morning. There are lots of these tents everywhere. If we had a place, I don't know, use Hyde Park, for example, as a space, it would be a better way of doing well, it. Yeah. But it yeah. has to be the other side of the equation. You can say, look, this is how we're going to deal with the issue, rather than just say, let's not give them any more tents. It's actually an offence to camp in a park, yeah. certainly in London. Because, At the moment, because, yeah. because Because my boy wanted to do it um, as, as an overnight adventure, right. and I was going to do it with him, and we, we found out we so weren't... Right. You, yeah, I mean, the, the trouble is, as well, if you just say that's one area you can have tents, you do create a tent city, don't yes. you? Mm. A sort of ghetto where, every, I mean, all sorts of crime can go on, yeah. as well as much-needed shelter. But also they had that problem in Los Angeles, didn't they? Well, they had terrible to try and problem, clear yeah. tent yeah. cities. I, I saw a homeless city. man I often see actually hiding behind a sort of duvet um, in a doorway. I asked after him. He, apparently, he's gone, he's left London now. Mm. But there's a human story behind all this. Yes, yeah. And he's looking is. more and more bedraggled. Yeah. But, but it is a fair point if you look even at Paris or San Francisco mm. or Los Angeles. These, these, these ten, tented cities now are enormous. They are actually you know, mm. thousands and thousands of them. So it is an issue. Maybe 
with that. And it's not addressing the real problem. Yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. We have to address the real issue mm -hmm. about homelessness. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? Just taking away where, that their temporary homes is not the solution. Yeah, good one. OK, Piers, yes. um, a juicy story here that caught my eye also um, this morning, and that is... Keir Starmer, the yeah. Labour Party's stance on yes. Israel is forcing a Muslim voter backlash. Yes, the story in The Times today on page 8 is that Starmer's line is set to cost him seats but not power. Mm -hmm. So there's been a calculation. Starmer's been quite clever about this. Um, you remember how a few days ago, was it two weeks ago, he got into trouble because he appeared to suggest that uh, Israel was right to stop fuel and water and food from getting the yep. Gaza. He had to backtrack on that because that's clearly, unac well, clearly is unacceptable, but we have to say more about that. Um, now he seems to be equivocating, or at least he decided not to get too involved in the question of whether there should be a ceasefire. I suspect a lot depends on the exact meaning of ceasefire. There's been talk about pauses versus ceasefire. I'm not quite sure what the difference is meant to be. I mean, what, what Starmer should be... Well, the truth, I think, is that the, the humanitarian situation in Gaza is truly unimaginable. I mean, we, I think the average human being can survive something like three or four days without water. Water but, cut... But the point, though, back, to, yeah, back on yeah, point, yeah. why should this affect how people vote in Britain? Well, I think the ping is that he was... Uh, I mean, Starmer doesn't want to alienate Muslim voters. Mm. Many Muslim voters are, you know, they may not vote for him. But he's made a calculation that by, by sort of equivocating on this, uh, he's not... He's going... He may lose some Muslim votes, but he's not going to lose his chance of reaching number 10. He might, he might lose some other votes too, actually. He, you know? Well, hang well on. that's what he's right about. Let's, well. let's do more on that in a moment. Right yeah. now, it's exactly quarter to seven. Uh, you're watching Breakfast on GB News with Anne and Martin. Let me remind you of some of the top stories coming in. To the newsroom. Yeah, a UN official has said there is no safe place in Gaza. And this comes after a recent rocket attack near news media in Stero. In South Israel, our home and security editor Mark White was on site during one of those attacks. You can see here at the back of this vehicle the alarms are sounding in the building there. So just right in at the back of that vehicle, the rocket, uh, some of the debris has impacted the window. According to our People's Poll today, 20% of people say they support the pro-Palestine demonstrations during the Remembrance Day weekend. And that comes as the Prime Minister has branded them provocative and disrespectful. And we are still joined by broadcast Andrew Eborn and philosopher Piers Ben. Uh, we just finished off on that storm. So, mm. Andrew, let's move on to one of yours still on the Gaza conflict. Um, and this is Israel rules out a ceasefire until hostages are freed. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And every single time... There was, there was a cartoon in The Times a couple of days ago which basically had uh, uh, Israel, uh, an Israeli chap putting down his guns and uh, saying cease, and they had behind him Hamas saying fire. Um, and so they're trying to put it on that sort of basis. And it's horrendous, because as soon as you start personalising these sort of stories, there are the hostages there. There are more than 240 hostages are held by Hamas, and Anthony Blinken and others are saying, look, hang about, let's try and get them out, or let's try and sort that uh, before we carry on with, with, with the offences and so on and so forth. Israel is saying, well, if you do that, they're just going to carry on anyway. Yeah, and also they can move the hostages yeah, around. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they can regroup in yes. certain areas. Um, so you can see Israel's point of view... Yeah. As well, and also the Israelis keep reminding us, and it's worth reminding ourselves of what happened on the seventh of October. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot get, you must not let that escape your mind. Yeah, four weeks today, and in fact that yeah. broke on mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. program as it happened. Brings on to our next story, one of yours, Piers. We're yes. covering this this morning. The People's Poll, the GB News People's Poll. Yeah. Only twenty percent supports the protests on Armistice Day. Eighty percent are against them, and that includes the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Yes. Yes, the, the headline, the front page of the Daily Express, uh, hate marchers are a front to British values. This is according to Rishi Sunak. And there's a, a suggestion, I'm not sure whether it's true or not, that Rishi Sunak actually wants the protest banned. I think we, you know, we need to be very careful before banning things. I mean, there are certain people who love to ban, ban things when... Uh, you know, who rather get very offended about breaches of free speech when it's their own views that are being under attack, but they're very happy to ban people who, um, when, when they disagree with them. I mean, the crucial issue here is the Palestinian cause... Well, there are two things. The Hamas cause. Hamas is, of course, without any doubt, a, a theocratic Islamist movement that wants to, to, to destroy Israel and to establish this theocracy over the entire region. Mm -hmm. They've said that themselves. On the other hand, the Palestinian people some of whom, I don't know how many, but I imagine quite a few of whom support Hamas, 
Um, well, they voted in, them in. They rule, they rule the country. It, well, I think in 2006 they did. Then they abolished elections, as so often happens with these. So we, actually nobody knows. But mm. I would imagine a sizable minority, at least, do support them. They are in a truly desperate position. I mean, can you imagine you... No food, no water, no fuel, anxiety, death, grief. Uh, your home's gone. I mean, but and Hamas then... knew this would happen. I mean, they wanted this war, didn't well, they? Well, I, 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 it, they maybe must have, they must have known the response. Yes, we have. I think we have to divide the the responsibility. I mean, the issue. Yes, Israel is, is entitled to um, defend itself against attack, but there's always a question of proportionality. Um, it's perfectly true to say that there's going to be collateral damage in a just war, mm. but one of the crucial components of the idea of collateral damage is proportionality, yeah. and this is not often discussed. How can anything be proportional to what happened on the 7th of yeah. October? Well, the point I is... I mean, the, uh, the absolutely disgusting yeah. violence yeah. that was meted I, out I think we're, we're on absolutely innocent all children, together, babies all together and on, mothers. on that. It's absolutely horrendous, and we should call that out. I and mean, there's two important points to make. Yeah. Is, is one, first of all, not all Palestinians are obviously Hamas. You no. work on that sort of basis. Uh, but also, and the point you were making brilliantly earlier, Anne, is that using language like it's a hate march yeah. is already prejudging this. And what I find really objectionable is that the poison and prejudice that is populating social media is now spilling out onto the streets. Yes. And we used to be a fantastic community here where everybody was combined well, and we well, could live hang, together peacefully. Hang on. And it's all getting prejudiced hang, now. Hang on. I'm not so sure that this is being caused by mean tweets. This is, this is a direct um, precipitation of what happened by, when Hamas invaded Israel and decapitated, murdered, raped mm. and kidnapped You're absolutely people. right. So, on, it's on not about tweets. Well, no, no, but it's, it's <laughs> the <laughs> language. It's the language of war, yeah. which is what I observed, Anne's brilliant point earlier. I just worry it's about the fact that yeah. if Rishi Sunak is using the same word, calling these things hate marches, yes. uh, that's, uh, that's not helpful. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And it, it just inflames prejudice. Okay, so, so, so back to the point, um, should yeah. they be banned, these marches? Or should we just do something perhaps it, more moderate, it's, like, it's, like it's allow them? To, yeah. yeah, it's a slippery prevent slope. them from going yeah. to sensitive places like yeah. the Senate. I, I think you're right. It's a slippery slope if we start banning marches because it's one of our cornerstones of democracy, isn't it? Mm. The right to protest. But at the same time, you have to have sensitivities, and that two minutes of silence needs to be preserved. And we want to make sure it's not going to inflame the situation further. Absolutely, people have got a right to protest, and we have our own views. Couching it in certain languages, which is inflammatory, very dangerous. We want to report the news without fear or favour. Mm -hmm. At the moment, there's a lot of fear about the language that we use, that we want to be incredibly sensitive. But there's a lot of we don't fear want to make it worse. the Jewish community. There's yeah. been a six and, and that is disgusting. rise in, in hate. But, but this word offensive being used, let's ban it because it offends a lot of patriotic people. Well, the fact that something offends someone is not in general a reason to ban something. Mm. You know, no, but I worry, don't you? And when you think of, particularly on Remembrance Sunday, of the hundreds of people yes. who've served this country so well and preserved the freedom, preserved yeah. the freedom to protest, yeah. will be marching past the cenotaph, wearing their medals, being terribly, terribly proud in the way that we all... I mean, I don't know, watching it always yeah. gets me upset. Oh, it does. I don't, it gets I, me upset. I absolutely yeah. love it, if you like, because yeah. I just think it's a wonderful thing to be so proud of. The idea that that could be that could be turned into something horrible and hateful. No. And it's a big thing. People come from all over the country and the world, the world actually, yeah. to, pro to, 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 uh, to, to peacefully march, march past right. the cenotaph. And, and they have to be, uh, you know, they have to be held in, uh, um, where is it, the Royal Horse Guards Parade, yeah. and then they process down That's the right. mall and they go past yeah. the cenotaph and then they end up somewhere else. And then they all go out for lovely lunches together. And oh, yes. if that is stopped in it from being the usual peaceful, wonderful thing, I, I despair. I really Really do. I, 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 and I'm totally with you on that. One. Not a matter people. of disrupting the ceremonies; it's a matter of having a protest somewhere else. I mean, yeah. And if, it's, if they, they fought for our freedoms, as you said, well. Um, people are just exercising the freedoms for which they are. Yes. And another yeah. interesting point, a fascinating point about this People's Poll that GB News ran as an exclusive is only 30% of those who responded have confidence in how the police will manage this. Mm -hmm. And that's a key point, mm -hmm. because at the moment they're saying that they're, they're trusting the word yes. of the protesters who say, oh, no, honestly, we won't go near the Senate to have governor. Yeah. Well, if we believe the kind of people that have Hamas paragliders on their coats, if we believe the kind of people mm -hmm. who pull down kidnapped posters, mm. perhaps that's not strong enough. Do the police need to beef up their action? Well, who knows what the police are doing? I mean, it, clearly the, the, the general principle behind protests is that uh, a certain level of disruption is legitimate. Um, anything that goes beyond that level that, say, stops the seventh half taking you know, or, or disrupts the service, that would not be. Um, you know, causing offence is 
legitimate in a, on, on the democratic, in a democratic society. Um, incite, inciting violence or hatred is not. The police have to decide where the line is likely to be drawn. I don't, I, I don't envy them. Yeah. Can I just move us on, because we've only got a minute left yeah. before yes. we have to go on to the weather, ah. which is very important for everybody to know. Yeah. Um, just to something a little lighter. Oh, yes. Well, to the Beatles. Um, oh. I haven't heard the blooming thing yet. Oh, I, I've heard it. I've seen the video as well. But they've now well. released a video. Yes, they've released a video which got Paul now at 81 years old, uh, mm -hmm. together with some old footage. And at the end, the Beatles will take a bow and they fade out. It's their last song ever powered by AI, which we'll be yeah, talking about yeah. in, in the thing later. And basically what happened, it was an old recording done in the 1970s, yeah. and they tidied up uh, the recording of John and his vocals and his piano and so on and so forth. So in the video, you see, you see, and we're showing a still picture here, so you see John yes. in his heyday, yes. um, and you see, you see in the video, you see Paul as he is now. Correct, yes. And Ringo? Mm. Uh, yes, and, 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 and George as he sort of last that's was? That's it. It's on the front page as well. Of, of, of the Times and a, a number of other papers. And you see, there he is, Paul and Ringo, as, as they are now. And, and obviously, you've got the other two as they were then. Is it a yeah. bit icky? Is it sad or is it joyful? Um, I think it's, it's emotionally sad, but not in a bad way. I think when they bow at the end, I, and I was watching it again just yeah. outside, I'm just going to be now. Uh, it is, it's a sad moment. Yeah. It is the last one. But what it does do, it shows actually the power of artificial intelligence, which I'll talk about yes, later. That's what right. they, what they mm. could have done, which they didn't, and I think a lot of people are glad, they could have done an AI John Lennon. Yeah. yeah. What, you mean yeah. they could have aged him? No, they, they could have brought <laughs> him to life. Oh. Well, and now I, they could have done that. And, yeah. not and, that and that's the thing, and that's the point that Paul wanted to emphasise as well, it's not synthetic in terms of these are John's real yeah. vocals, well, they just yeah. tidied it up. Yeah, yes. so what is a synthetic photograph? You can touch a photograph up, we've had Photoshop since mm. 1990s, what does it mean to be, well you're in the business, I mean what does it mean to for a, a bit of image to be real? What is weird about it? And there was a concert recently, was it Glastonbury, when they had us old footage of John Lennon yeah. mm. uh, combined? Glastonbury, and that was, he was that, there. It Glastonbury, was Glastonbury, yeah. yeah. It was weird because you have this nostalgic rush, this idea that you, the present, it's, it's still present, it's not past its present. It's well, okay. we haven't given up talking about it, yeah, that's for yeah, sure. Mm. Let's catch up with your weather, though.